Okay, hello everyone. Uh, let's get started here. Uh, welcome to this webinar brought to you by fxstreet.com. This is my monthly webinar, My Daily Analysis Finding High Probability Trading Setups. Uh, my name again is James Chen. I'm the Chief Technical Strategist for FX Solutions. We're a global foreign exchange broker. Now, uh, what we're going to do today, uh, as, as I do every month, uh, that I've been, you know, I've been doing this for, uh, several months, this, uh, monthly webinar here. Uh, I'm going to be showing you, uh, some live charts with what I'm looking at in terms of the currencies and, uh, a little bit of, uh, the metals as well. Uh, and I'm also going to give you my approach to trading the Forex market, uh, in terms of, uh, how I look at the technicals, how I look at setups occurring, uh, et cetera. So first, I'm going to give you a background uh, of what I look at and my approach to the markets, and then I'm going to go straight to the charts and show you exactly what I'm looking at on uh, the major currency pairs as well as uh, some crosses, et cetera. So let's get started now. Uh, before we get started, uh, hopefully you can see my um, PowerPoint presentation here. I'd like to give you just a quick important notice uh, that you see up here on the PowerPoint. Um, and I'm just going to read a little bit, and then you can read the rest. Uh, take a few seconds to read the rest. Uh, Forex trading involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. The information contained herein is solely for informational purposes and should not be construed as trading advice. So if you take a, a few more seconds to read over that, and then we'll get started. Okay, and before we uh, start talking about uh, my approach to trading Forex, uh, as always, uh, I'm going to give you a quick overview of myself in case you're not familiar with who I am or what I do. And for those of you who uh, are on these webinars, uh, you know, who have been on these webinars before, uh, please bear with me. Just a quick note about myself. I'm the Chief Technical Strategist at FX Solutions. Uh, I've traded actively as a private trader, uh, you know, pretty much since the inception of Retail Forex using primarily technical analysis and trend following within technical analysis. Uh, now, prior to that, I was trading futures and uh, equities. Uh, but when the Retail Forex, um, you know, opportunity came out, uh, I, uh, I really jumped on it. And, uh, you know, it's been very good. So uh, in terms of how I trade, uh, you know, I do pay attention to fundamentals, although on a day-to-day -day basis, in terms of my exit entries, et cetera, I am, uh, you know, I am a technical analyst, and uh, I tend to uh, follow the trends. I'm a Chartered Market Technician, or CMT, which is a designation for uh, technical analysts. I'm also registered as a Commodity Trading Advisor, or a CTA, with the National Futures Association here in the U.S. Uh, I publish daily and intraday analysis, including my chart of the day that you can find on fxsolutions.com, as well as on fxstreet.com, among other uh, websites. I have a Forex uh, analysis and education blog at fxpath.fxstreet.com. I've also authored numerous articles in Forbes.com, Futures Magazine, Technical Analysis of Stocks Commodities Magazine, SFO Magazine, etc. Now, just as a side note, um, in I believe it's either October or November, I'm coming out with uh, uh, an article in Technical Analysis of Stocks and Commodities Magazine, and this is going to talk about uh, you know what I'm uh, currently focused upon in terms of my uh, research. Um, which is uh, strength weakness pairing, which I'll talk about in a second uh, on on my slides. But um, that's going to be coming out in October, November in Stocks and Commodities Magazine. Now I'm also quoted by uh, on a regular basis by Reuters News, Dow Jones, AP, International Herald Tribune, uh, and I have two books out. One of which came out last year, Essentials of Foreign Exchange Trading, and also uh, it came, uh, the second book came out uh, just a couple months ago. Essentials of Technical Analysis for Financial Markets. So you can uh, take a look at those. Uh, I also have a, um, a DVD. It's actually not newly, newly released anymore. It was um, released uh, earlier this year. It's called High, uh, High Probability Trend Following in the Forex Market. And you can go to um, fxstreet.com to take a look at that. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I had this uh, International Traders Conference online. It was in April, but I forgot to take that off my slides. Anyway. So let's get down to uh, the main part of this presentation. And again, I will be showing you my live charts in a second. But for those of you who are not familiar familiar with, uh, you know, how I trade, how I approach the markets, I'm going to show you. Uh, I'm going to uh, give you a brief overview right now. Now, in terms of my primary trading principles, trend. Okay, trend is number one, uh, at least in my book. 
Uh, there are a lot of counter trend traders out there. Uh, I tend to be a trend follower. I follow the trend. Um, you know, when I talk about trend, what is trend? Uh, I, I often equate trend to, uh, inertia, uh, physical inertia, which is basically, uh, you know, a part of the, of the theory of physical inertia is that, uh, an object in motion tends to stay in motion. And, uh, you know, and that's how I, uh, classify trend. It's momentum. You know, uh, you're moving in a certain direction. You have momentum in a certain direction. I couple that with strength weakness pairing. Which I'll talk about in a second. Uh, and this is what I, uh, what I mentioned before about my article coming out in Technical Analysis of Stocks and Commodities. It will be on strength and weakness pairing, uh, which I'll talk about. Now, uh, also, uh, another tr uh, primary trading principle, support and resistance. Of course, you'll see on any of my analysis, uh, lots and lots of support and resistance. Consolidation breakouts. I'm looking for within the uh, direction of a trend, I'm looking for consolidations or, uh, you know, minor retracements and then breakouts of those consolidations, retracements in the direction of the trend. Uh, also, confluence. Confluence is very, very uh, key in uh, how I approach markets. What is confluence? It's just uh, a coming together of different, um, you know, confirmations or different factors uh, that all support each other. So when you talk about confluence, I'll, I'll show you examples of it in, in a minute, but uh, confluence is just a different um, rationale for getting into a trade. Okay, and multiple rationale for getting into a trade. Uh, I also use multiple time frames, different time frames to look at different perspectives on the market. I use price targeting, although I don't uh, wait. I don't necessarily wait for my target to, target to be hit before I get out of a trade, but I do use price targeting to give me structure to my trade. I like to lock in gains, and I'll talk about that. And risk management, of course, first and foremost, it's last here. Uh, not a lot of people like to talk about it, but um, risk management is probably among the most important uh, elements of trading that you could uh, pay attention to. So let's go on from here. Okay, now these are my primary trading principles. Now let me go ahead and go to this slide. Okay, so I'm going to uh, briefly go over everything I just talked about. Trend. Okay, what I talked about before, physical inertia, an object in motion tends to stay in motion. Uh, this is this really works on Forex. If you take a look at any currency pair, you'll see on pretty much any time frame, there are prolonged periods of trending. And uh, what, are you, what is trending? It's momentum. Okay? And uh, it's, moment, it's directional momentum. And why are you jumping on the trend? Because you would take the path of least resistance. And that's uh, really what I talk about a lot. Uh, avoid trading against a strong trend and wherever possible, trade with a strong trend. Okay? It only, to me, at least, it only makes sense. If you have a strong trend going, why not trade uh, with the strong trend and you know and uh, if you have a strong trend why trade against it now uh, I, what I often do is I trade consolidation breakouts or retracement correction breakouts in the direction of the trend that's what I talked about before what are consolidations uh, you know uh, within the within the um, course of a trend you have periods where uh, price moves sideways for a little bit or it retraces a little bit uh, it corrects and we'll see that on the charts in a second um, and then I'm looking for a breakout in the direction of the trend. That, to me, makes uh, a lot of sense. Okay? What is trend? Again, like I said, momentum. Why do I have strength weakness here? Okay, this is uh, really the focus right now of what I'm, uh, you know, what I'm working on, which is strength weakness pairing. And uh, how do you identify strength or weakness? Uh, because, you know, if you take a look at the Forex market, you'll see, you'll, I mean, if you've ever traded the Forex market, you'll know that, it really is different from the equities market, the futures market, uh, et cetera, in that, you know, every financial, every trading instrument in Forex is traded as a pair. Okay. So that gives you the opportunity to pair strength with weakness. You take the strongest currency, you pair it with the weak, weakest currency, and that gives you a higher probability that your directional bias is correct because you're buying the strongest, you're selling the weakest, and uh, to me, that makes a lot of sense. Okay. Now, the question is, how do you identify which is the strongest and which is the weakest? I have a question here from Matahari. Which uh, time frame would really show us a true trend? Well, that really depends. You know, uh, you, you know, anything that occurs on uh, with uh, you know with price action uh, or most most uh, technical events that occur, including trends that uh, occurs um, with price action, occurs across 
all time frames. So you will find trends on the daily chart, the four hour chart, the one hour chart, the five minute chart, the one minute chart, etc. You're going to find trends on all different time frames. And it really depends on how you trade. I tend to look a lot at the four hour charts and the daily charts. Okay, so I'm looking for trend on those charts. And often what I'll do is I'll look for trend on the daily chart and then look for possible entries on the four, four hour chart or sometimes the one hour chart. But if you're a real short term trader, You'll find trends on the, uh, you know, the five minute chart, the one minute chart, uh, or what have you. There may be a lot of noise that comes with it, but they're trends nonetheless. Okay. Good question. Now let's, uh, let's go on from trends here. So again, very key here, strength and weakness. Okay. And, uh, you know, pairing strength with weakness is very, very key, uh, when trading the Forex market. Okay. Support and resistance. Uh, now, uh, if you ever, if you've ever traded any financial market, support and resistance is pretty straightforward. Support is a floor. Resistance is a ceiling. I look for both horizontal um, support and resistance that, that I just talked about, uh, you know, support being a floor, resistance being a horizontal ceiling, uh, also dynamic trend line support and resistance, an uptrend support line, a downtrend resistance line. And I look for those as possible entry zones on breaks or bounces, okay? So, again, bounces or breaks can be used in this capacity. Uh, I add entry filters wherever possible. I talk a lot about entry filters. Why, uh, you know, when you get into a trade, what is it that you're doing? Uh, you're not getting in right when there's a, you know, a one pip breakout, uh, or a, you know, a bounce, you know, a bounce that looks like it's, it's, ba uh, it's bouncing right now. You're going to wait a little bit, uh, or at least, you know, my, my approach is that you wait a little bit to see that momentum is, is, uh, in fact, in the direction of your trade before you actually get in. And that's what uh, an entry filter is. Now, uh, horizontal support and resistance can be prior market turns, which I tend to rely on a lot. Prior market turns. Uh, they could also be Fibonacci levels, pivot points, etc. Okay, let's get through this real quick. Uh, consolidation breakouts. Okay, now what am I looking for within a trend? Uh, I'm looking for support and resistance, but essentially support and resistance, uh, what I'm talking about there are breakouts of support and resistance of consolidation. Okay, so... I would uh, use breakouts of consolidations, again, like I mentioned, where price moves sideways or there's a slight retracement or a minor retracement or correction. I use breakouts of those as entry zones, and I'll show you what I mean in a bit. Uh, consolidation can be chart patterns like, uh, you know, uh, triangles. Uh, I, I have lots of triangles on my charts, lots of flags and pennants. You know, these are usually thought of as uh, as continuation patterns. So breaks of those are essentially breaks of support and uh, resistance in, uh, you know, preferably in the direction of the trend. Okay. So, uh, uh, that's what I mean by, uh, by consolidation breakouts. Okay. And it doesn't matter what these chart patterns are called. I'm just looking for consolidation where the trend is resting and then for price to move in the direction of the trend again. Okay. And then retracements corrections can be short term counter trend moves, uh, and then trade breakouts of these moves in the direction of the trend, as I mentioned. Okay, I have a question here. Uh, when you work off of the four-hour and daily charts, what types of stops and what type of price targets do you use? Uh, I'll show you what type of price targets I use. Also, the, the type of stops I uh, I generally use. Uh, but, you know, generally speaking, I have price targets just to, uh, you know, let me figure out, um, you know, some structure to my trade. But generally what I like to do is I like to, you know, first of all, move my – move my uh, stop loss to break even when it goes in my direction and then trail manually trail my stops according to the technical. Okay. So um, uh, I'll, I'll talk about that in, in a second. I have a slide on that as well. Um, but in terms of confluence, okay, confluence is another primary trading principle that I have uh, where possible. I look for areas where more than one technical factor provide rationale for a trade entry. Okay. And the more support there is, now, I'm not talking about support, resistance support. I'm saying the more support or the more rationale there is for a trade, the higher probability, I believe, that trade will tend to be. Uh, an example, uh, bounce off established support coincides with the bounce off uh, a 38.2% FIB level. And, it, you know, if that coincides with a, a pivot point, uh, then, the, you know, the more the better. But uh, if there's confluence there, then that to me is a higher probability trade. It's a confirmation of different factors. Now, just as a side note, uh, if you go to, um, I'm not at all affiliated with this, uh, website, but, uh, you know, I know the, uh, uh, I know 
you know, I'm, I'm, uh, an acquaintance of, of the person who runs the site. It's called pivotfarm.com. And just to take a look, you know, uh, I'm not, uh, making any recommendations here. I'm just saying, go take a look at what they have in terms of confluence because what they're doing is they're taking confluence to a whole different level. Uh, they're, they're taking pivot points, all different types of pivot points, Fibonacci levels, uh, you know, prior market turns, trend lines, uh, moving averages. They're taking everything and they're putting it together and finding zones uh, of confluence where, uh, you know, where bounces or breaks or what have you would have increased significance. So that's pivotfarm.com. You can take a look at that. Uh, I've got nothing to do with that. But, uh, okay. So anyway, that's confluence. Um, multiple time frames. Uh, let, let me put, let me put this in just, uh, it's called pivot farm, uh, pivot as in pivot points, farm, F-A-R-M dot com, Puerto Rico. Okay. Uh, just take a look. You can uh, look at the video they have there. Uh, it just talks about a uh, confluence and that's really what I mean by confluence, but they take it to a whole different level. I'm simply saying, uh, you know, more than one, you know, instead of just having a bounce off of support level, perhaps if that bounce off that support level coincides with a fib level, uh, and it coincides also with a trend line, then that's, you know, that's str a stronger trade. Uh, these guys take it to a, a different level. So just to show you what confluence, uh, you know, how confluence can be, can be perceived. Okay. Multiple time frames. Now, uh, different, um, different time frames will often have different trends. So I have a multiple time frame trading strategy that you could take a look at. Uh, I believe it's on fxstreet.com. There's a, uh, um, you know, it's from a, it's from 2008 that I have a recording of this webinar, so you can take a look at that. Uh, it's all about trading different time frames and um, for a higher probability trade. Now, uh, what I often do is I look on longer term time frames. In my case, daily for the trend time frame, and then I would only trade in the direction uh, of the trend on the trend time frame, and then I'll drill down to the four hour, one hour, or what have you, looking for uh, possible entries. And the trend can be determined by um, trend lines. Uh, moving averages, visual estimation, uh, et cetera. And I'll show you that in a second. Price targeting. Okay, this is what we're talking about, price targeting. Now, uh, I don't like to target prices, but you'll see in all of my analysis, you'll see price targets. Why? Uh, I'm trying to figure out some structure to my trade. I'm trying to figure out possibly uh, risk to reward uh, ratios, uh, et cetera. That's why I have price targets, but... Uh, you know, generally speaking, when I'm trading, I'm not looking to uh, get out at price tar at my price target. I'm looking to uh, I'm looking for uh, to ride the market as much as it'll give me before you know before it takes me out. Okay, so uh, I'm going to do that. Uh, yeah, and that's and that's a really a strong uh, trend following technique, which is uh, really to see what the market gives you, as opposed to tell uh, you know saying. This is my price target. This is where I think it's going to go. This is where I'm getting out. Uh, you know, the market will do what the market does. So you let the market do what it does and hopefully you can follow it and capture as much profit from it as possible. So that's why when I talk about, uh, price targeting, you know, uh, I'm looking for, uh, established support levels to the downside for short trades, resistance levels to the upside for long trades. And, but these are only initial price targets just to give me structure to my trade. Okay. Now, locking in gains. Uh, so this is what I'm talking about. This is one element of, uh, you know, of uh, uh, trailing stops or manually trailing stops, which is what I like to use. Now, locking in gains, that's moving your stop loss to break even after the trade develops. I think it's a great way to avoid, uh, you know, to lock in, lock in break even and, you know, and to avoid losses. And, uh, ma and after that, manually trailing stop losses, um, is a great way to lock in further gains after, uh, after or if price goes, continues to go in your direction. Okay. And both of these practices also serve to diminish stress and emotions when trading, which is very, very important. Uh, trading psychology is extremely important. Most people, uh, really overlook trading psychology, but, uh, when you're trading and you're able to, uh, to lock in your gains, lock in break even initially and then lock in your gains after that, uh, your stress and emotions tend to, um, you know, diminish significantly. And after that, uh, it helps a lot when you're, uh, yeah, you know, when you, when you have less stress and emotions. So that's blocking gains. And lastly, but not least, um, yeah, let me see. Swerved, a, uh, a plumber 
it helps to keep a winning trade from uh, retracing into a loss. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, uh, once uh, keep a winning trade from retracing into a loss. Yes, absolutely. Now, risk management. Uh, use initial stop losses that conform to technical levels, uh, not to arbitrary criteria like amount of pips or dollar amounts. And I talk about this a lot. Uh, you know, I'll say it just one more time here. Uh, for those of you not heard me say this before, uh, a lot of people, I hear a lot of people, uh, say, uh, you know, I'm going to get out of this trade, uh, with a 20 pip, uh, stop loss. I'm going to get out of all my trades with 20 pip stop loss. And, um, you know, I think that's the wrong way to approach it. Uh, I think the best way to approach it is to base it upon something like a technical level. For example, if you go long, then place your stop loss underneath, uh, underneath, uh, you know, uh, let's say resistance. If you go uh, long on a breakout of resistance, placing your stop loss underneath resistance is a, you know, when, when the trade tells you, when price tells you that your original reason for getting to the trade was wrong, that's where your uh, stop loss should be. Other people use, for example, average true range. You know, let's say you're on a daily chart, you're trading a daily chart, you could take uh, the average true range as a, you know, as a stop loss, although that, that's pretty big on a daily chart, but, uh, you know, a lot of people use that ATR. Um, and then, uh, you know, from there, you manage your risk constantly during the life cycle of trade, not just at the beginning of a trade. So, uh, as I mentioned before, locking your gains is, uh, is a form of risk management. Okay. So finally, let's, let's get to, uh, the chart examples. Okay. Bear with me for one second, please, while I pull up my charts. <coughs> okay. This is my chart of, uh, euro dollar. Okay, this is a this is a live chart of euro dollars, a daily chart. Now, just to show you uh, some of my principles, you know, back in the day when when um, when uh, price uh, since uh, basically since uh, early December 2009, when price was dropping, after price dropped, uh, it formed these consolidations and uh, minor retracements, as we can see here in the form. This is a uh, uh, you know this is a minor retracement. If you call this a flag, uh, another flag, another flag, another flag. That's what I'm looking for. It's a downtrending situation. Um, you know, after it broke out, well, let me show you here. After it broke out uh, below this um, parallel uptrend channel, uh, the, you know, after it was uh, the down the new downtrend was established, there are many areas of consolidation and retracement. And as you can see here, uh, all uh, possibilities for getting to trade. Here's a rising wedge here, uh, and then you know, all possibilities for getting to a trade. Some better than others, of course. Um, you could take a look here. Uh, this established uh, support uh, here. So, uh, you know, these yellow lines are support or resistance. These white lines are um, are patterns, are chart patterns. And then these green lines are uptrends, and the red lines are downtrends, okay? So many opportunities during the course of this uh, of this big downtrend that went all the way. Let me give you the percentage change on that. Okay, this is a little tool that we have in uh, AccuCharts. Okay, that was a, 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 a 21, you know, around 21, 22% uh, drop in price from early December down to the low at uh, 118.75, uh, which occurred in June, early June 2010, okay? So that's a big downtrend right there, okay? Uh, very, very strong downtrend. Many opportunities to get into this downtrend on uh, consolidation breakouts or retracing breakouts, okay? Now, once uh, early June occurred, okay, this bottom right below 120 at 118.75, I believe, yeah, right here, 11875 on June 7th of this year, we bottomed out, okay? We bottomed out at 118.75. From there, it looked like there was going to be another correction, okay? But that was not to be the case. Uh, we started a new uh, uptrend. Okay, after a while it was apparent. Uh, at first, many people, me included, uh, would, uh, you know, were talking about, uh, uh, this was just a correction. But after a little bit of, uh, of this, uh, uh, bullishness, perhaps it's a trend change. Now, could it still be a correction? Absolutely. But, uh, this is a, re a really big correction, uh, if it is. So anyway, uh, what are we looking at now? Within the context of this, uh, new uptrend, from uh, the bottoming out uh, at 118.75, okay, we formed an uptrend line, okay? And uh, this is a daily chart of Eurodollar. I'm going to show you a four-hour chart in a second. Uh, the question, Jose, what MA are you using? 
in this case, the, uh, the moving average I'm using is a 50 period simple moving average, uh, which I have on a lot of my charts. But I also use 100 period simple moving average as well as the um, 200 period simple moving average, okay? Uh, just, just for uh, talking about slope and, uh, you know, uh, the trend slope, the trend strength, et cetera. <coughs> and also for support and resistance sometimes. Okay. Uh, it's a 38% retracement of the entire swing. Yeah, I think that I have this on my other chart, but let, let's see. Yeah, I mean, it went, uh, you know, if you talk about this, uh, I think this is what you mean. Is this what you mean, swerved uh, a plumber? Um, you know, from this high up here down to this low down here, uh, it, it, uh, it went beyond the 38.2%, uh, you know, at this point. But, um, you know, it's sort of in between 38.2 and 50%. So that's, that's a Fibonacci there. But good, uh, good observation there. Okay. So what are, what are we, uh, doing right now? So right now we're in an uptrending situation on Euro dollar daily chart. You can see that this uptrend support line was just respected at around one, uh, you know, right above 127. This bounce off, uh, and I talked about this in my analysis. This bounce, uh, right above 127. It was, uh, it went down to 127.33 before it did a slight bounce. And right now, uh, as you can see, I've got a downtrend line here, okay, within the context of this uptrend. If there's a break to the upside, uh, you know, above this uh, downtrend resistance line, this uh, within this uptrend, then uh, I'm looking for a break above 130, okay? Now, now, uh, you know, on the daily chart, we can see there's a clear uptrend going on right now. Let's go to the four-hour four hour chart. Okay, four-hour chart. Now, uh, if you've seen this on any of my analysis, uh, yeah, this, these are the charts I use for, uh, you know, for my analysis. So th this is what's going on here. As you can see, same uptrend here. From this low down here, uh, 118.75 back in um, June, early June, we see very clear uptrend, okay? Now, at this point, right around uh, late June, okay, we accelerated this uptrend into an uptrend, a parallel uptrend channel that was steeper, okay? This is an acceleration of the trend. The fact that that trend was broken down in, uh, you know, in early August, th uh, this, uh, this accelerated uptrend channel was broken down in early August was a very uh, bearish uh, signal, okay? So what happened, if you take a look here, it broke down and then it uh, retraced back up to the line and then it broke down from there. And what I was looking for was a breakdown below 131. 131 is key for me on Euro dollar, okay? It broke down below 131, um, and then it broke down below key psychological number at 130. It's a round number, a very important number. It's also a prior support and resistance level. So uh, once it did that, uh, what was I looking for? Uh, uh, you know, you'll see a post. Uh, if you uh, if you take a look on fxstreet.com, you'll see a post. I said uh, uh, euro dollar shooting for 127. Okay, so after it broke below 130, I'm shooting for 127. Now what happens? It uh it goes to 127.33. That's uh, you know so it it fell short. It fell about 33 pips short of my um of my target. And so you know I'm not waiting for my target to be reached, okay? Because who knows where price is going to go? Is it going to hit 127? I have no clue. You know 127 is a is a, a key support level for me. So I thought you know that's a good target to have. But, uh, you know, who knows what's pri what price is going to do. It, it went uh, uh, 33 pips shy of my um, of my target, and then it bounced back up. Now, so it bounced uh, uh, above 127, and it also bounced above this, uh, this line here, this uh, uptrend line here. So what am I looking for now? Uh, I'm looking for uh, if, in fact, there is a breakout above 130, the key psychological number, then uh, immediate resistance uh, target right, uh, you know, right there in 131, okay, and possibly more bullishness from there. But uh, generally speaking, I still tend to be a bit uh, bearish on euro dollar. So I'm looking for an actual breakdown. If it breaks down below this uptrend, I'm sorry, I moved that by accident. If it breaks down, if price breaks down below this uptrend and then uh, below 127, key support 127, I'm looking in 125. That was actually yesterday's chart of the day. Uh, if, uh, you know, if there's a breakdown of this trend line, breaks down below 127, I'm looking to target 125, okay? 
Um, but for now, we've respected this uptrend line with a bounce. And then uh, we've had some consolidation there. Okay, so let me go quickly. What are my stock settings? My stochastic, Boyke, uh, great question. My stochastic settings are 14.33, okay? Why 14.33? I've just used it for years and years and years. Uh, but I'm, I'm, you know, generally speaking, I'm looking more at price action, less at stochastics. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at uh, British pound against U.S. dollar very quickly. Okay, what are we seeing on British pound against U.S. dollar? Um, we're seeing much in the same manner as we saw on euro dollar. This is a daily chart of British pound. We have an uptrend line here, very, uh, you know, and an accelerated uptrend line. It accelerated uh, just like uh, the euro dollar in, uh, you know, in early Oh, actually, euro dollar did, did a little bit later, but uh, British pound against U.S. dollar accelerates in early uh, June, and it accelerates into this uptrend, this uh, steep uptrend. And as we can see here, we're right back down at the uh, uptrend line. Now we've hit key support at 155.50. Uh, take a look at my analysis from uh, past several days. Uh, you can see 155.50 is key support, okay, and it's also this uptrend support. Now, let me go to a four-hour chart real quick. Okay, this is a four-hour chart. <coughs> you can see very, very uh, key um, uptrend channel that we're still in. We haven't yet broken this channel. See, right now we're on the very bottom of this channel. But if you take a look here, within the context of this channel, on the four-hour chart of cable, we see many instances of where price broke, broke out above um, – you know, counter trend retracements broke out above, uh, what do you call it? These, uh, resistance lines. So as you can see here, if you could see my, if you could see my, um, my mouse here, we have resistance here. You know, uh, many instances of resistance, breakouts of resistance in the direction of the trend. And then what happens up here? This was in, uh, in early August. We had a breakout to the upside, an acceleration of an already accelerated uptrend channel, okay? It breaks out above the, the top of the uptrend uh, channel, which is basically an acceleration, okay? And then it uses this line as support. It hits up to 160, just a few pips shy of 160, okay? And then it comes down from there, uh, much like euro dollar. We came down from uh, uh, 160, and then we formed, uh, we went back into the channel, and then we hit key support at 155, as you can see. 155, I'm sorry, 155.50, okay? Let me make this a little bit bigger so you can see. 155.50 is key support here. What's upside resistance? 157. We've been, uh, you know, we've been going back and forth between 155.50 and 157 for the last several days, as you can see here, okay? And this corresponds with the bottom of the uptrend channel. What am I looking for? I'm looking for a break to the downside. If there's a break to the downside below 155.50, Immediate uh, a support, further support target down at 154.50. Okay, as you can see, if you look back here, this was resistance, then support, and uh, for me, if there's a break below 155.50, uh, your immediate target uh, could be 154.50. Now, uh, conversely, if uh, this uptrend channel is respected with a bounce, which it doesn't really look like right now. It looks like it's on the verge of breaking, but uh, if it's respected with a bounce, then, uh, you know, obviously I'm looking for a breakout above the consolidation, a breakout above 157. If there's a breakout above 157, possibility for retest 160. Okay, and I'm just playing momentum here. Uh, if there's a, uh, you know, if the trend continues to the upside, I'm looking for a retest of 160, and that's what we hit back in uh, in early August. So that's British pound against Jap uh, against the U.S. dollar. Okay, let me go to uh, dollar yen real quick. Okay, dollar yen. Uh, this is a four-hour chart of dollar yen. Again, I look to, I like to look at daily charts and four-hour charts and uh, you know sometimes one-hour charts. But here's a four-hour chart of uh, dollar yen. Uh, we see that there's a very clear downtrend. If you take a look all the way up here, uh, the high in early May, we formed a, a downtrend line, okay? After this uh, touch in early June, 
we accelerated the downtrend. And from there, this acceleration was touched many times. This uh, dollar yen, in this case, is very technical in that it's following this downtrend resistance line, as you can see here. Okay, the last touch around uh, 86.50 of this, uh, you know, and it came close to coming to this uh, uh, resistance line. Okay, but basically, you know, we've been uh, going up and down in a consolidation for the past, um, you know, since the beginning of uh, August. Okay, now, what was I looking for on a breakdown below 86.50? Okay, what was I looking, this is a messy breakdown, by the way, very messy breakdown. But, uh, but it was a breakdown nonetheless, okay? So, uh, a breakdown below 86.50, I was looking to shoot for 85. Why 85? Because back here, this was this, uh, long-term low. Oops, let me, uh, redo that. Long-term low, uh, in, um, November 2009, okay? Around 85. So, I was shooting to target 85, looking to target a round number. Uh, it finally hit it after going back and forth, up and down a lot. It finally hit it. Now, uh, you know, and then we've been consolidating ever since. Uh, I'm looking for a breakdown below this last low now, uh, which is uh, just below 85, 8471, or 8470, I believe. Let me see what the low is at. 8471 around is the low. Uh, a breakdown below there. Uh, I don't have any more targets at this point in terms of prior turns, so I would use Fibonacci extensions in, store, in, in terms of, you know, if you want to set a profit target. Okay, so that's dollar yen real quick. Uh, and if you have any questions, please let me know. Okay, this is, uh, Dollar Swiss. Uh, Dollar Swiss is... Okay, I'll try to get to the, uh, one hour chart to show you, uh, entries, but, uh, you know, I, I usually do the entries on the four hour. Um, <coughs> but anyway, this is, uh, Dollar Swiss, okay? So as you can see, this is a daily chart of Dollar Swiss, downtrend line, okay? Uh, big downtrend line since, uh, since mid November 2008. This is a very, very long term, uh, downtrend line. What happens in, uh, uh, in April of this year? Break to the upside. Okay. A big break to the upside. So what happens is it broke to the upside, uh, and then it, it, uh, had this big, uh, you know, uptrend and then just as steep downtrend from there. Right now in big consolidation, you can see here. Now, from a shorter term perspective, let me look at the, uh, let me look at the, uh, uh, four hour chart real quick. Okay. Four hour dollar Swiss. Okay. Downtrend, uh, channel. Uh, and within the, uh, it's, it's not a very steep one, but uh, this is a consolidation basically. But, uh, I have a downtrend channel here. I have, uh, intra, intra channel uptrend lines, uptrend support lines. I was looking for breaks. My most recent uptrend line that I drew was this one right here. Okay, and it broke to the downside. It consolid it was not the best break because it consolidated a little bit afterwards, but then uh it broke to the downside and then right now we have uh support at around one oh three fifty. Okay, one oh three fifty is support if you can take a look here. Uh a breakdown below there uh would be, you know, for me a possible opportunity to get into uh dollar Swiss trade. Okay. But generally speaking you know, uh, a very shallow downtrend and uh, opportunities to get in on breaks of intra-range uptrend lines. And these are corrections or retracements within this downtrend uh, channel. Okay. Next. Uh, okay. I'll show you um, where patterns fail. Okay. This is Dollar Canada. Okay, and uh, if you looked at my analysis uh, from a little while back, I was looking for, uh, we have this uh, uh, this big, uh, you know, what do you call it here, uh, triangle consolidation here. And uh, what I was looking for was a break on either side, because we've been in a sideways consolidation on Dollar Canada for, I don't know how long, a long time. If you take a look at this daily chart, we've been in consolidation uh, for a long time. Frederico, dollar Swiss, what about long to 105.50? I'll take a look at that in a second. Um, but uh, in terms of dollar Canada, uh, again, I was looking at a big, uh, a very big triangle within the, uh, you know, context of a sideways consolidation. Okay, I was looking for a break to the upside or to the downside because there's no real trend here. So uh, what happened was it broke to the downside. For me, uh, I would, uh, I wanted to target uh, you know, if it broke down below 102, I had a target of 101, but then, uh, finally my target would be, uh, you know, parity once again. 
on Dollar Canada. Uh, not to happen. So what happened was there was a breakdown, but not much uh, follow through and momentum. 101 was support. Okay. So we hit 101 or we came close to 101. Um, but then uh, from there we bounced uh, way back up. Uh, and then now we're sort of consolidating. Uh, you know, from there. So this is, uh, you know, this is pretty much a failed, a failed pattern as of now. But, um, you know, I was looking, you know, I was looking for more downside there. Wait, let me just take a look real quick. Okay. Now, Aussie dollar. Okay, here's another failed pattern. Um, Aussie dollar has been very technical. Uh, for quite some time now. This is a four hour chart of Aussie dollar. Okay. We had a double bottom low here in early, uh, July. Okay. Double bottom low at around 83. Um, yeah, at around 83. Okay. From there it launched off, uh, and it, um, you know, and it went up from there. It formed this uptrend, uh, I'm sorry, uptrend support line. Okay. And then it broke through many key levels like, uh, you know, 88.50 and then, uh, 89. And then, uh, you know, it hit up here at 90.65, which for some reason that was a key level. Okay, double test right here, came back down, and then it tested it again before breaking through to the upside. It hit a high above 92. Okay, and then from there, a drop down to break this very valid uptrend line. You see here, uh, one touch, two, two, three, you know, four or five, uh, you know, five or six touches of this trend line, very valid trend line, break to the downside clean break to the downside, okay? So this break to the downside was a possible opportunity to, to, you know, trade the change in trend. Now, from there, again, as we mentioned, 90.65 area was uh, resistance. And then, as you can see, a retest right here. Do you see this candle right here? This was a retest uh, of the uh, of resistance, okay? So that became support. Resistance became support. It went up. And then, once again, another retest here. You see this? Okay. Uh, but then finally a break to the downside. And then this break to the downside, that was uh, the beginning of what I was looking at as a possible new, uh, you know, downtrend after the break of this uh, uptrend. And then what I saw here was, uh, you know, a little bit of a, um inverted flag here. It broke down below the flag. It broke down below 89. It hit 88.50. Okay. It, it approached 88.50. Um, but it didn't hit it. Okay. Uh, and then from there, it launched all the way back up, and now we're uh, above or we're around uh, 9065 resistance once again. So that, that's a, uh, a failed pattern right there, at least for the time being. Okay. But uh, in terms of trading with the trend, you know, uh, if this doesn't consolidate, if it continues to go back down, then uh, at some point I might jump back into it, especially if there's a break to the downside below 8850. And that for me would be a very uh, bearish signal. Uh, Boyke, question: What per, uh, what percent do patterns fail? Uh, I don't know, but there's um there's a really good book, and the name of the book escapes me, uh, and the name of the author escapes me as well. But uh, I guess it's not much help. But uh, there's uh, there's this book that goes over uh, you know all of the patterns and how much you know and their uh, and their tested failure and um, and success rates. If someone could think of that, uh, the name of that book, um, you know, I read it, but I forget the name. I've, re I've read many books on, on this, so uh, I forget the name. So, yes, that's it. Uh, Bulkowski. The book by James Chen. No, <laughs> mine doesn't go into that uh, very much, but uh, Bulkowski, yes, the Encyclopedia of Chart Patterns. That's a great book. It gives you a lot of, uh, you know, failure and, um, you know, success uh, rates for these patterns. So. Uh, I would recommend uh, getting that. And I think I've run out of time with this. Uh, I'm sorry, maybe I didn't get to everything I was going to get to. I was going to get to gold, but um, tell us my trigger. Okay, my trigger. Okay, let me. Uh, JY Long, what is my trigger? My trigger for getting into a trade usually is a breakout. Uh, and then if I'm looking on a four hour chart or a one hour chart, uh, within the direction of a trend, I'm looking for counter trend retracements or consolidations. I'm looking for breakouts. What was my trigger? The breakout, but then, uh, I'm looking usually for the next bar to, that's my entry filter. I'm looking for the next bar to surpass the breakout bar. And that shows me that perhaps 
there is, in fact, momentum. You can never know if it's going to be a false breakout or, or a real breakout. But the fact that the second bar, um, you know, breaks past the signal bar, which is the breakout bar, that shows me that perhaps there is momentum in the direction of my trade. And that's what I'm looking for. Um, Uh, Dollar Swiss, uh, you know, I, I think I've really run out of time here. Uh, Dollar Swiss, I think, uh, you were talking about upside on Dollar Swiss. Let me see. Uh, break above 150. Uh, possibility. Yeah. I, I mean, one, one, uh, one, I'm sorry, 105.50 is a possible, uh, breakout level. I see that as resistance. Uh, I would look more though at a possibility for a breakout above 106, um, you know, 106 because I see that as well as resistance. And sorry, I couldn't get to all the questions. Um, let me quickly turn to here. So if you have any other questions that I did not answer today, here's my email address. Um, you know, jchen at fxsoul.com. Uh, you can check out my chart of the day at fxsolutions.com as well as FX Street and my blog at fxpaths.fxstreet.com. Check out my new FX, or not my new one, but... Uh, you know, the, uh, the DVD set that, that came out this year, High Probability Trend Following the Forex Market. Uh, and then uh, you can look for my, my two books, Essentials of Foreign Exchange Trading and Essentials of uh, Technical Analysis for Financial Markets. And um, I guess that's pretty much it. And thank you very much, everyone, for taking time out today to listen to me speak. Thanks a lot.